have got to get up pretty early to go do something. We are the alternative dig talk. With our mobile studios, we are redefining TV presentation just as technology is setting the pace. We are blending our approach with fresh, perspectively designed breakfast show, The Mighty Drive, informative and entertainment show, exclusive and live interviews. We President Museveni was the Jews in Amlaba, a Pimaka Unga Kiro Bili. That's what a Kalia. Nini Bavaria Kiro Tan. We are Nemokulis, Iguanga never removed the killer. Jagara Queva, that the alternative digi talk. It was the Kanoka Mighty Drive. Era Nava to Uliza, Bona, Abali Kumikutu, Jagara Basaba Mugendo Maso, no Uliza. All given to you, just a click away on your phone, tablet, laptop, and smart TVs. As we are streaming live on our social media platforms, on the road and on the go. We are the alternative dig talk. Hey Ugandans, I'm Lieutenant Colonel Dewa Kiki, the Deputy Defense Spokesperson, and actually the Deputy Spokesperson for the Uganda People's Defense Forces. I was hosted on Alternative Dig Talk. I encourage all Ugandans that this is the way to go. Always watch, participate, give your views, and ask questions on alternative digital. Digital, the way to go. Have you read a book that makes you want to shout the title from a rooftop? If you haven't, then here is that book. The Evolution of Constitutional Law, Public Law and Government by Retired Justice Professor George Wilson Kanye Hamba. Renowned Kenyan jurist and panelist Professor P.L. Olimomba and many other amazing speakers will grace the event. Do not miss the book launch on March 26, 2021, 2 p.m. at Imperial Royal Hotel. The ticket comes with a book, all this at just 200,000 shillings. Call 0702-9076 or 0783-047785 to get the book or follow up on the launch. This event is organized by Alternative Digitalk in partnership with retired justice Professor George Wilson Kanye Hamba. The Alternative Dig Talk. Real issues. Real talk. Have you held a peaceful demonstration by holding a placard? Or want a shot communicating about injustices? Is it a speech about rights? Are they for women, children, youths, people with disabilities, elderly, environmental or lands? Do you know you're a human rights defender? Are you threatened, harassed, intimidated, illegally arrested, detained, tortured or imprisoned as a result of defending rights? If you have experienced any of the four mentioned, Please reach out to National Coalition for Human Rights Defenders Uganda for assistance on their toll-free number 0800 100 250 or visit their offices located in Intinda, Kampala, Semawata Road. Defending rights is constitutional. Please don't shy away. Well, four minutes past uh, 7 a.m., a very good morning and a warm welcome to the Mighty Drive show. 
My name is Edgar Matthew Karohanga. As always, I'm here to serve you with uh, the different dynamics of what is happening in your country, in the international spectrum, and yes, in the world at large. Welcome to the Mighty Drive yet again. This show airs every Monday to Friday from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. As you wake up, you wake up with the Mighty Drive team so that we can drive you through the morning, the early morning hours, and uh, you know, give you the news and uh, host people for you here uh, that you would want to know more about. They give you wisdom in different types. So, you know, of different types and in different uh, situations. Now, today on a, uh, on, a, on a happy note, we have Mr. Anthony Odo. He's the Executive Director of the Health Equity and Policy Initiative Uganda. We're going to be seated with him right here on the Mighty Drivers. We dissect more on the health issues uh, pertaining our country and uh, our citizens. Many, many uh, different health uh, problems. What is the cause of uh, the different, uh, you know, uh, health conditions, COVID-19, uh, malnutrition. Let's talk about a lot of maternal health and everything today on the mighty drive show we have an expert in health equity and policy initiative and he's going to be here mr anthony Odo, and uh, we're going to be dissecting more on the information about uh, the health status of many ugandans and uh, the world at large but yet welcome uh, to the mighty drive show we are live from buganda road right here in kampala uganda's capital uh, city let me delve into the news that has been making rounds all over uh, the world and social media today i start on a sad note uh, the president is uh, dead this our president is none other than john pombe magufuli he's the president of uh, tanzania today uh, this uh, particular uh, day he, he died i think today when i said today is the 18th yes because it has around uh, uh, a quarter past midnight i guess yes so uh, this particular gentleman john pombe magufuli uh, passed on today and he, this was declared by his uh, vice president who said john pombe magufuli succumbed to heart failure Yes, that he has been battling for a while now. Remember, earlier on, we had a bit of challenges uh, starting from uh, what was happening in Tanzania. Uh, many people, were, in Tanzania, it was the first country to declare that uh, COVID-19 uh, was not there. It was COVID-19 free. But uh, many assertions and many um, people were speaking contrary to these particular statements made by the president, John Pombe Magufuli. And uh, many people were ravaging with COVID-19 in Tanzania. Some are dying. And uh, there, there's a lot of gossip that has been going around that this particular president, John Pombe Magufuli, died a while ago. I I think uh, a couple of days ago and he died due to COVID-19 uh, but these are an allegations but the official statement from the vice president of Tanzania asserts that uh, this particular gentleman Mr. John Pombe Magufuli passed on uh, due to heart failure he passed on in India at the age of 61 a very a very young man I think tomorrow I'll be bringing you the backgrounds and uh, you know his history his biography let's talk about John Pombe Magufuli what do we learn from leaders like these ones he is one of uh, yes the most em emphatic leaders Africa has had and Tanzania has had. Remember Tanzania had, has had a, a breed of uh, quality leadership in the past. Uh, we had John, uh, Julius Nyerere, Mzee Julius Nyerere, I think he was the, uh, the, 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 uh, the founder or the founding father of uh, the Republic of Tanzania. We had uh, Jakaya Kikwete right there. A couple of leaders now, John Pome Magufuli, an excellent leader who has who, are, who will be remembered uh, for a while now because of his controversy in different uh, dynamics. This particular gentleman was the first president to come out and declare that COVID-19 was not uh, real. It was a myth in Tanzania and uh, yes, he allowed many things to go away, to, to go on, uh, the, the games, the dances, but he realized it later that the, indeed COVID-19 was really a very, very uh, weird a disease and uh, it was really uh, real and it was killing many, many people in Tanzania right there. So it is on a sad note that uh, we want to pray that may the Lord uh, give uh, Mr. John Pome Magufuli the best of rests. May he rest in eternal peace as many of people uh, say. But yes, this is a reminder to many that COVID-19 is real. Please, please, please social distance, wear your mask, sanitize anytime because you never know what can happen. But uh, in Uganda, particularly uh, COVID-19 has been on a decrease as uh, I think yesterday the president said that uh, it was only 24 people that were having COVID-19 in the whole of uh, Uganda so that is on a sad note the Tanzanian president uh, is uh, uh, dead John Pombe Magufuli and Tanzania has declared 14 days of uh, you know 
14 days of uh, mourning uh, the president, the fallen hero of uh, Tanzania. This particular gentleman was very down to earth, uh, very known to be a friendly president. And uh, yes, I'll be bringing you most of his uh, uh, biography tomorrow. We'll be dissecting more on that. Now, let's come back here to Uganda. What has been happening in the Pearl of Africa, starting off in... Uh, Right here in Uganda, let's talk about the speakership of uh, Uganda's parliament, 11th parliament. Oh my God, it is, the rest is on. It is becoming hotter and hotter by the day. As we speak right now, uh, Rebe Rebecca Kadaga is also aspiring to go for a speakership of Uganda's parliament. We have Jacob Olanya, the deputy speaker of parliament, is coming in for the main seat. And lastly, we are having the world-renowned spokesperson of the Na Forum for Democratic Change. He's none other than Semu Junganda, the Kira municipality member of parliament it is going to be a tough one i'm sure of this uh, because of uh, you know the, the the bit of controversy that is between the supporters and the members of parliament of the nrm ruling government as we're speaking right now the nrm camp is divided some believe that jacob olanya is the rightful uh, speaker of parliament and the others are standing with uh, mama rebecca alito alakadaga now this has brought a bit of uh, new dynamics in uh, the, the, this particular race because if NRM divide, divide themselves and uh, because the SEC, the Central Executive Committee of the NRM is in support of Jacob Alanya, but then the parliamentarians themselves, the legislators, are in support of Rebecca Kadaga. Now we have uh, Awan Semujunganda who's coming in from the opposition. He's, an, an, he's looked at as an, 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 an underdog uh, from... Uh, you know, from the opposition, remember they have the list numbers. I think this time's parliament is the only parliament where the opposition has made over 100 members of parliament. So, yes, it's going to be a tough one. Semu Juma mandates that all opposition members of parliament have to support him. But many opposition members of parliament have asserted something different. They say it is not about, uh, you know, supporting you because we are opposition, but what quality do you bring uh, to the speakership bench? So that is something that we ask ourselves. Let's wait and see how it's going to unfold by the Central Executive Committee came out early and said Jacob Olanya is uh, who they are supporting for the, the speakership of the Ugandan Parliament. But the legislators themselves, as I've told you, are believing in Honorable Ali Twala uh, Kadaga. So let's wait and see how is it going to unfold, how is it going to move. You're still here on the Mighty Drive show and we'll be giving you the news as they unfold. Yes, allow me just uh, pass through on a small information. In the 26th of uh, March 2021, this particular uh, year, this particular month, sorry, we're just counting days now. I think about eight days to go uh, till we launch the book of Justice George Wilson Kanyehamba right there at Imperial Royal on the 26th of March 2021. We are going to be launching that book. A lot of things are going to be happening uh, right there at uh, Imperial Royal starting from uh, our chief guest being the deputy speaker of uh, uh, the parliament, Mr. Jacob Balanya. Our guest speaker at that is a uh, renowned Kenyan jurist, uh, none other than Lumumba. He's going to be here, PLO Lumumba. is going to be in the country. He's going to be, uh, you know, talking to us about the Buke launch, talking about democracy, talking about constitutionalism, and talking about uh, judge. Uh, you know, he's a lawyer and a counsel by, at that point. So make it a point at 200,000 shillings to grab yourself a copy of a ticket that is going to uh, you know hurry up be before stock lasts because man it is uh, it is an invite only it's not an invite only but you know there are many there are few people who are going to be allowed because of the covid 19 pandemic so uh, the first people to come are the first people who are going to get the tickets so on the 26th of uh, march 2021 eight days from now we're going to be launching the book of a uh, retired justice george wilson uh Kanye Haba, and the national coalition for human rights defenders uganda reminds you are you a human rights defender do you have any challenge as a human rights defender uh, do you while you're doing your work please just don't hesitate to call them and uh, contact them at uh, I think in the same water road that's where their main offices are in, in, if you need any help if you need any legal advice you know pro bono work if you're a human rights defender just log on to the National Coalition for Human Rights Defenders Uganda let's go back to the news uh, a lot of things are going on in this particular country now Chagulanyi Sentamu now, uh, from the NUP rights to the Chief of Defense Forces, Mr. David Mohozi, and the Minister of Security, Obiga Kanya, over missing people. Now, Chagulanyi has had a lot of people who have been missing from the National Unity Platform camp. 
many people are missing from this particular camp and uh, many v various reasons as to this particular uh, the, the security organs came out and, and had I think a list of 177 people whom they say they had in custody by in custody by then but then Chagulani says his number is different from this one he says the number that they have that is registered is over uh, 423 people but he has over 3,000 countrywide people that are missing some have not even uh, gotten traced uh, of others are just disappearing like that others has, have disappeared for as long as close to three to two years so that is a long time he says uh, that um, the CDF has to answer to these uh, missing people because at the end of the day it's uh, the CDF that is responsible uh, for the security of all uh, Ugandans so as we speak right now Chagulanyi Sentamu wrote yesterday to the CDF and the Minister of Security demanding for the missing people and uh, from the National Unity Platform. We are yet to get the response from the CDF, but when we get it, of course, we shall be the first people to give it to you right here because we are the mighty drive. We bring, uh, we bring you the news as it unfolds. We give you credible information, timely news every morning with me. Edgar Matthew Karang, and yes, I'm not always alone. I'm always with uh, the beautiful Farida uh, Bikobe right here as uh, we talk about how to develop our country and uh, policies at large. Uh, away from that, traffic police gets a new attire, new uniforms have been got by the police. So as we, as we speak right now, the traffic police has a new uniform. I hope uh, the white goes with the corruption and everything. So as we speak, uh, they have uh, a new new uh, uniforms right there as you're seeing you're driving through kampala you're seeing different people they have a bit of a white cape then uh, a green attire then uh, i don't know how they call are they are they leg warmers or something they are white so that is the new uh, outlook of the traffic police as i end uh, today uh, yesterday marked four years since andrew felix kawesi was assassinated mm, there's a difference between murder assassination and killing uh, they assassinate very important people. You murder a person and then you kill an animal or something like that. So Andrew Felix, uh, Andrew Felix Kawesi makes four years uh, uh, after his demise. He was assassinated in 2017. Uh, following many things we don't know up to now nobody has been booked there, there is no justice and this was one of uh, the things that were hinted on by the family of uh, Felix Kawesi they say they have not got justice up to now uh, these arbitrary killings even uh, we, we remember this uh, legislator from Arua Biliga he was shot but up to now no report has been made where are, are the people who are the perpetrators of uh, violence and death of these particular cadres? Uh, we need to get this from the judiciary and from the security operatives. Who killed uh, Andrew Felix Kawesi? Up to now, the report has not uh, been uh, found. Yes, as I end, Onaebona guy in Abila Sempal are still in dramatic court case after somebody, uh, Professor, Professor Bariam Reva, yes, that's his name, from Macquarie University, says he had. He she, he gave her a loan of over 800 millions and so he's taking the collateral and that was the house but uh, the, uh, Mr. Sempala, the husband, I don't know if they're still dating or still married uh, but uh, he says this house is their matrimonial home and he's not just leaving it like that. This is drama, my dear. I don't know what happens to legislators after they move out of parliament. And just 18 minutes past the top of the hour, allow me to go for a short commercial break. When we come back, we're going to be having Mr. Anthony Odo. He's the executive director of the Health Equity and Policy Initiative. My name is Edgar Matthew Karuhanga. Why not enjoy your morning? Let's go for a short commercial break. Alternative Dig Talk. Real issues. Real talk. Have you read a book that makes you want to shout the title from a rooftop? If you haven't, then here is that book The Evolution of Constitutional Law, Public Law, and Government by Retired Justice Professor George Wilson Kanye Hamba. Renowned Kenyan jurist and panelist Professor P.L. Olumumba and many other amazing speakers will grace the event. 
Do not miss the book launch on March 26th, 2021, 2 p.m. at Imperial Royal Hotel. The ticket comes with a book. All of us are just 200,000 shillings. Call 0702-9076 or 0783-047785 to get the book or follow up on the launch. This event is organized by Alternative Digitalk in partnership with retired justice Professor George Wilson Kanye Hamba. Hey Ugandans, I'm Lieutenant Colonel Dewa Kiki, the Deputy Defense Spokesperson, and actually the Deputy Spokesperson for the Uganda People's Defense Forces. I was hosted on Alternative Digitalk. I encourage all Ugandans that this is the way to go. Always watch, participate, give your views, and ask questions on alternative Digitalk. Digitalk, the way to go. Have you read a book that makes you want to shout the title from a rooftop? If you haven't, then here is that book. The Evolution of Constitutional Law, Public Law, and Government by Retired Justice Professor George Wilson Kanye Hamba. Renowned Kenyan jurist and panelist Professor P.L. Olimomba and many other amazing speakers will grace the event. Do not miss the book launch on March 26, 2021, 2 p.m. at Imperial Royal Hotel. The ticket comes with a book, all this at just 200,000 shillings. Call 0702-9076 or 0783-047785 to get the book or follow up on the launch. This event is organized by Alternative Digitalk in partnership with retired justice Professor George Wilson Kanye Hamba. The Alternative Digitalk. Real issues. Real talk. Thank you, Munange Guatkeja, for every day. We believe not Monday to Friday, Sawe Mu, Eo Masa, Namwe, Abalabi, but the voltage, Sawe Mu, Eo Regulo, Papa Sawasa, to be as a new Akensu Santi Muevale, because we know what it means to be buying data every day and we are always streaming live. So to be as Akensu Santi Bamikuano Muevale, we are on Facebook and our name is The Alternative Uganda. We are always live. Kwano Genda, you would work with Sekoda, like the page and follow us. One similar live video. Have comment section take a message with your comment anything to get up and get to chisoma mokwano mugenyi wa febuichi na haba chivuzo agenda kubanga te ya chikudam wata sobo de tulaba live video ya fe the same video to get up and get to take a yo ku youtube sawa nyang over tano ogea kusobo lo genda ku youtube the name is the alternative uganda na yo berenga ate monange osobo la te yo kulaba show ya fe yonu na kula lido comment zo zi take what to get up and get to following up we are on twitter as the alternative Uganda. Mokwano so now we kusaba to go everywhere. Our Twitter handle is the alternative Uganda. On YouTube we are the alternative Uganda. And on Facebook we are the alternative Uganda. We have the executive director of health equity and policy initiative in the studios, Mr. Odul Anthony. He is a lawyer. So, but now it's going to come to get a law to get a view of Yabulamo, a man of Yabulam to be sold in the new to do later. Our doctor got to in a moment to get a view of Lamo. You know, so to us, Kubi is about Mikuano, Mang Wake, about an attack over the two hundred and set down the pages of Tanaka Uganda. We are streaming live on Facebook. Mang Wake, Mang Wake, Timar, Timar, so we're going to get a little to get a dollar to get. 
denya mateka yesterday we had a lawyer so lero tugenda kuba nyo echo byobulamu eno kubanga mateka go mgawuli denyo tubadde ne ba lawyers banji so tugenda kuba ko katono mateka denyo sawa za fezisinga tugenda kubanga ate tuli mu byabulamu twagala tumanye ebyobulamu byo biyimiride bitya mu Uganda ya feje tuli mu na kulwalero karo hanga yes, kwa sozoti ya mkwano na sizo bulunji na ye na nazo kide ku shock ya mm. John Pobe magufuli okwa yeah. It is a sad day, but mm. still we have to. Um, we are wishing a happy birthday mm. to President Power of the FDC. Mm. Happy 58th birthday. birthday. We wish you many, many more returns mm. to you. Uh, may God bless you with all your hearty desires. Uh, Odol Anthony, you are welcome Thank to you. the Mighty Drive. May you please greet our viewers. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Anthony Odol. I am the executive director of Health Equity and Policy Initiative. I am a lawyer by training and uh, I focus a lot on human rights but more specifically on the on the right to the right to health and uh, my organization focuses uh, on toxics and human rights um, it is one area that uh, not many taken uh, keen on uh, it, uh, many a time people are actually talking about civil and political rights yes. but uh, they hardly uh, talk about uh, social social and, and cultural economic and rights oh. so today basically we're going to have a, a discussion on uh, toxic and uh, human rights uh, uh, to cater for all my viewers, we are going to do a mix, Luganda English, Luganda yes. English, such that my Luganda viewers are also catered for. Um, Mr. Odul, Anthony, may you tell us about you? Who is Odul? Odul is a, is a simple gentleman uh, who is passionate about uh, human rights. Mm -hmm. I uh, do human rights on a daily. It is what I love. Um, I run an organization, like I earlier said. Mm -hmm. Run health equity and policy initiative, and um, I'm passionate about health issues. And um, I basically, we basically look at the intersection between the law and then health. And the health. That is what we do on a daily. What and the had you kufuna interest to call even to know a biobulamu? Was it your passion? Kuvangoli manamto? Passion is yatandi kavena. Na wa ma, wanga, ma, mama wange ya fanga za oh, so, so ya fava mtu wala mduwa liyo mtu usayo uh, ya tiri kanyo usayi na avasawo uh, ebiserevyo bali sivanji that was which year? Uh, uh, that was uh, 1994 so noro icho bambi mami wange na yafa mga azara yali azara so I think you know into Which class were you by that time? I was in I was in P4. Why didn't you choose to do well because you know Salawano Genda Mateka? Um Negala Nya Mateka uh Wanga Nalabanyo Nalinja Galanya uh Bamateka Nalimuto Nayenga Bugamba and Jagaranya Ban Twengeri Jibu Giramu Gamba Nang gave you so beyond it here. Nanga take up Nalinga Matida Mulevi. And those are so catalytic uh, health equity and policy initiative. What is this organization? Can you just give us a brief background about the health and equity, health equity and policy initiative? Health equity and policy initiative is a non profit, okay. non for profit organization. Mm. It's, a, it's a national NGO. Um, it is based in Mengo, and uh, what we basically do is to to advance or promote uh, the right to health. Mm -hmm. And uh, you realize that uh, the right to health for us is very central, but there are other rights that we look at, yes. like the right to food, the mm -hmm. right to water, the right to a, a clean and healthy environment. Those are all rights that 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 uh, that are tethered around the right to health. So that is our focus. But uh, apparently, we are running a program on toxic toxics and human rights. Okay, then talk about toxics and human 
human rights. What do you mean by to toxics and human rights exactly? Yes. Um, when we talk about toxics, it's, it's a broad thing. It's, okay. it's, it's, it's really big. Uh, recently, you saw what happened when um, Kenya actually banned uh, our maids. Yes. Yeah, it was because of the aflatoxins. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we talk about the aflatoxins, we are talking about the poison. It's basically poison. Or butwa. Uh, butwa. Mm. Yes. And then let us see mm. Just handling a so basically, uh, you, you remember last the other week, I think the discussion was about uh, maize and how Kenya had actually uh, even Burundi follow, uh, yes, followed yes, the suit, yes. mm. even Burundi, yeah. and uh, the discussion mm. was about trade, mm. and uh, I was a little disappointed that they were not talking about. The, 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 the adverse effects of actually having, I mean, consuming mm. products that are actually poisonous. poisonous. Yes. Um, you realize that in Uganda here, mm. we, we, we are actually having many people dying because of uh, uh, non communicable diseases. Yes. And, and CDs. Yeah, it is, it is one of, yes. uh, we are going to even talk about that. Yes, NCDs. Uh, yes. And, and all this, there's a chain. It actually yeah. comes from what we eat. How, is, mm. how it is handled, but mm. most importantly, mm. we also look at the regulatory framework. But yes. is, it, is it really working? Is it really working? But, but Rodul, isn't this problem of people eating processed f food, what, what people call junk food, yeah, yeah. People eat, because a lot of people now do yeah, yeah, junk yeah. food a lot, isn't that the cause of uh, these non-communicable diseases? Uh, uh, precisely, mm. precisely. And that is why as health mm. we are saying that, you know what, yeah. government you've actually been entrusted with how to actually regulate businesses. Mm. But what we are seeing is some bit of sluggishness. There's, there's uh, some kind of delay in enforcement. Because what, what uh, we are doing is to promote trade. Yeah. But, but if, if you're promoting trade, you must promote quality. Yeah. It's very important. Because uh, there, there's need for consumer protection. Otherwise, if you don't uh, protect uh, consumers, then the burden is actually going to go back on the state. Yeah, because, because now, when they fall sick or yes, something. Fall yeah. sick and now you must appropriate mm. enough funds to ensure that the hospitals are well so Sometimes stopped. prevention is better than exactly, cure. Exactly, <laughs> that's the point. Yeah, but here in, in our country, you know, people wait yeah. for the challenge, problem to come and then they, they, they start rectifying it after uh, it coming on board. And, and I think that is improper. Mm. It's improper because um, yeah. I, think, I think our people need mm. information. Yeah. And... Uh, you see, because there is a contract, mm. there's, there's a contract between the people and the state. Yes. So the state is actually obligated to avail people with this information and tell them that, look here, there are these products in the market, but you need to actually consume them uh, consciously. Oh, okay. Yes, well, that, that is something, that is a, a very big challenge that we are having in this country. Yeah. Look, I, I, there are no policies for such things, you know, foods and health of people. I think they are really looking at the trade and other 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 sectors are better than this one. But uh, let's talk about uh, your your organization, the Health Equity and Policy Initiative. Does it also work on uh, mental health of, of people? Um, people are going through a lot. Yes, 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 we do. But we've basically been doing it at at, uh, at an advocacy level. level. Okay. Uh, we've we've actually not uh, done uh, a lot of work around mental health, but uh, at least we've made some bit of noise around, especially uh, during the COVID time. Of course, many people were not working, others were laid off, and so we, we were able to actually do some advocacy around uh, uh, mental health issues, especially with, with workers, because you remember during COVID, when there was that lockdown, many people were actually uh, in their houses, they were jobless, and they didn't have money, and, uh, and they were idle. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, and uh, basically we were pushing for, uh, we, we were actually uh, pushing for government to be considerate to uh, people who are hard hit. And uh, right now you realize that uh, bar owners are actually hard hit. Yes, they are hard hit, and you've had stories of people who are dying, and 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 then 
people who are having issues in their families because I mean they cannot work just because of uh, COVID. So th 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 there is need for us to appreciate that there is a link now uh, between COVID and, and, and mental health because now if you're not working that is when we realize yes, that yes, because yes, of covid we realize that mental yeah, health yeah. is something yeah, exactly is vital. yes yes yeah, but, but let's go back to, uh, to the food uh, yes yes sir. this processed food yeah, yeah. i don't know you know there are plants uh, they, they plant them today in like three weeks or a month yeah, it's yeah, already yeah. blossoming the fruits are already there yes yes how, how how credible is this food let me use that word for failure well well, well i understand the background there is this innovation about food that is uh, basically pushing for uh, food security because in many there are, there are countries where there is there is no food, especially those semi-arid places and and so because of innovation people are actually now thinking about GMOs and uh, when you're thinking about GMOs you're basically trying to uh, create some kind of food security. GMOs, these are genet uh, genetically uh, modified foods, okay, and uh, I mean, I mean, it's basically to help out communities that cannot uh, uh, get food. I mean, so so it's it's a it's some kind of innovation to ensure that people get food, but of course, you and I know that in, in I mean, technologies also have disadvantages, yes. so we must actually tread carefully when we are taking on these GMOs. How healthy are, are these GMOs? These, these it's, because I've tested some of the mangoes and the mangoes test are testless. They don't even have a test. They're just there. Uh, it, it's not about the test, mm. but it's about mm. your health. It's mm. basically about your health mm. because now if something has been engineered, mm. what, what are the health, what are the, 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 the health effects yes, okay. you get? Mm. So, so basically it's not about the test, but when you take, for example, um, an egg that has actually been engineered, what are the adverse effects? I think that, that should basically be the discussion, okay? But many a time we are talking about food security, but we are not talking about the effect of these GMOs on our, on, on, on our health, and, and that is very crucial. Yeah. Do you can you do you mind giving us some of the effects of this food? Because okay, personally, I've had uh, an assertion that over a long time when you're taking this food, yeah, yeah. it causes cancer. Yeah, 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 like yeah, yeah, yeah. Are these uh, things really true? Of course, there are, there, are, there are studies that indicate that uh, some of these uh, products actually have uh, carcinogenic elements. Okay. Uh, these are cancer-causing elements. So, so uh, w w when you take these things they can actually cause you some problems. So which is why uh, we need to actually uh, support our systems, like for example, the National um, Drug Authority, UNBS. These are agencies that must be supported. Uh, government should actually appropriate more funds to ensure that these entities have uh, the requisite equipment to actually test some of these, these products, you know. But now the challenge that we have is these guys are doing their best. But now when it comes to having uh, uh, high quality equipment to actually test some of these products, their, their hands are basically tied. Yes. So. Odell, we have seen you in many campaigns. Yeah, yeah. Campaign, yeah. I am seeing a bottle of soda here. Yeah, yeah. But before we go here, mm. <laughs> I think it has some particles. My camera woman will zoom and, and the people yeah, who are yeah, yeah. us will, will see what we have in the studios. Now mm. in the lava early campaign your toilets, yeah, yeah. You, like we have mm. a right to clean the toilets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, did you achieve what you wanted to achieve? No, we, we are still doing the the public toilet um, advocacy program. Mm. We've uh, not yet achieved because as I speak right now within the city, most of these public toilets are locked. They, they are locked and uh, you must understand that we have very many people who live in this city who are actually homeless yes. and uh, they have nowhere to go. And uh, it's unfortunate that uh, KCCA is still having these facilities actually locked. We, we have mothers, we have children who live within this city who need these facilities. 
but they are unable to access them. We've interacted with uh, their tenants uh, who work in these facilities and they say that, you know what, I mean, we are only directed to work up to about six. Mm. Uh, beyond six, we cannot operate. So now what happens to people who live in the city? Because remember, we have a, a housing problem. We, have, uh, uh, we still have um, st uh, street kids. I mean, the unemployment levels are still high. And, and people want to make a living within the city. There are people who even work at night and they need to access these places, but they cannot and they cannot. So the, the public toilet um, uh, uh, advocacy program is still on. We are, and as I speak right now, I'm, I'm praying to uh, KCCA to open these facilities. Let, uh, uh, let KCCA, the ones who are in charge of uh, the public toilets, open these places for these people. People are actually messing up these facilities. When you go there in the morning, you find these places messed up. I have interacted with uh, these attendants and that's, that's, that's what they tell me. Have yes. you tried getting in touch with the health ministry? So maybe you work hand in hand. Maybe that, that you have what you have identified. Maybe they have not identified. Have you uh, tried reaching out to them? Yes, we've tried engaging KCCA. We are still engaging them and uh, we believe that uh, they will understand the point, the, the cause that we are pushing for. And uh, we, we need more of these facilities. Kampala, during daytime, has about uh, 3 million people. Yeah. Yes, over 3 million people. But we have actually very few facilities, okay? And yet, we have mothers on the street who are selling tomatoes, who are selling mangoes, and they cannot afford going to malls to actually uh, use them. Yeah, and, and, and pay. Even there you are know. people who cannot afford 500 shillings. Yeah, there are people who cannot afford 500 uh, shillings. Mm -hmm. And so what, what we are saying, we are saying that, okay, what KCC uh, has done for now is, uh, is, is commendable. But we are saying that we need more. We need more of these facilities to cater for uh, street uh, uh, kids and and. Persons, persons who are mentally challenged. By the way, we have persons who are mentally challenged mm. all over. Yeah, okay, yes. so where do they go? So we, we need more of these facilities so that they can access these facilities. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, uh, I will want to, to take you away mm. from that and then look at the, the stage where in these buildings, like toilets, embedded in the Okay. Let, let's talk about that. And then I tried it, you know, mm. it's so are mm. they accessible by, 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 by these um, mm. the PWDs? Mm. 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 Yes. To talk about the new level for Embera because you did a survey and maybe you have your own findings. Yes. Uh, to our color survey, the two chisel and the Kabuyon Josino is a KCCA. Tezina Visan is all. Katibu ogenda yo, olusi tosanga yo sabuni. Abachala tebasobola kuingira yo. Kubanga, wano sanga wansi, nga wana. Nga amazi gajudewo. Um, uh, e, wa flooding, umkazi tosoba agenda yo. Kubanga ogenda yo, yunza no kwa, o kufuna, o kuluwa, o kufuna enduwa de. So, uh, kwe gamba, uh, kwe gamba walu wobu zibu wobu amanyi. Era to Sabanti KCC A, a young Gazemo Amani, a Tekemo, a being to every son is all, Kuanga to a Zimutazina and a toilet paper. Who is responsible for this public toilet? The KCC A or the. It's, 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 you know, this is squarely. To point it now. Squarely. Squarely. We point fingers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Squarely, it's KCC A. Because you will understand when you, when you look at uh, the KCC A Act. It actually empowers uh, KCCA to actually do what? To offer these social services, okay? So it is squarely on KCCA. But I must say that they are doing their best, but uh, their best is not enough, okay? Their best is not <laughs> enough because there is need for, uh, uh, for more facilities. For example, if... Uh, you go outside the central business uh, district. If you go outside the, the central uh, business district, we do not have these facilities. For example, if you go to uh, Kawempe, yes. 
you, you will not find these facilities. So, so what we are asking KCCA is to actually increase many of these facilities in these different places, mm. okay, especially in the slums, and uh, so that people can actually access access them. Uh, access them. Let's talk about the medical health and medical care in our country, the hospitals. Yeah, yeah. In under what state are the hospitals right now? Because there are, there are those that are the, gov the government hospitals, you don't want to go there. I've been to yeah. Mulago, to I, Mulago, I, I don't talk about yeah. the Mulago cancer yeah, yeah. institute. Yeah. Yeah. Before the your disease kills you, you yes. the situation there kills you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, what is the state, as you are a health expert, what is the state of our, our hospitals today? Well, 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 it is really sickening. And uh, what bothers me is uh, recently uh, government was considering to, to cut on uh, the health budget. And increase on the security and budget. The security uh, you, you can imagine. Surprising. So, so surprising. for me, <laughs> it's not surprising. I, I, feel, I feel like crying because we're already in a bad state. Okay. And uh, what our people are doing, especially those ones who are in charge, they want to cut the budget, okay? We've we've actually uh, if we've we've actually not hit the target the target of the Maputo protocol, yes. okay? What was the Maputo protocol? The Maputo protocol was 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 actually saying was actually giving us some target that at least uh, uh, fifteen percent of our budget should actually do what uh, should actually cover you know the the, the 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 health sector. We've not yet reached there, okay? But now you can see the state is actually considering to cut. On, um, on, on, on the budget, which is actually unfortunate. But who are these people affected? It is me and you, especially uh, us who cannot, I mean, especially people who, who, who are not having uh, reasonable uh, salaries or an income that can really sustain them. Which is who are many. Who, who, who are many, and uh, especially the women. Yes. Yes, especially the women. Just imagine... Uh, here in the city, we already have that problem. Now, let's talk about the person who is in my village. Yes. Okay. Mm. You, you, you will, you will actually go to a hospital, and there are no doctors. Okay. Many of these doctors are actually doing. Uh, they are, they are. I mean, they are just in their pre, uh, their clinics and doing their work and forgetting about their work in in the in the public health facilities. Yes. They're not motivated. Yes, yes. That is why we're saying don't cut the budget. I don't cut I, the I budget. When, but who is to blame? Is it the Minister of Health? Maybe she has not uh, really um, advocated for, for a bigger percentage to the health sector. No, we, we, we cannot put it on uh, the Ministry. I think it's just the system. Uh, we, we cannot squarely put it on the Ministry of Health. We, we, we need to look at our leaders. Yeah. The members of parliament that we send eh, to that August House, they have a responsibility to appropriate. Okay? Mm. They have, that is a huge responsibility. So for them to go to parliament and not talk about these things and not to push for a, a, a better vote is actually an indictment on them. So I wouldn't, uh, I would actually squarely put it on uh, our members of parliament. But again, I would also place it on us. How many times have you uh, uh, held your your member of parliament accountable? How many times? You even see these people. For me, I just see them in times of you see? elections. You see? <laughs> so it all starts with us. Yeah. And which is why for us, uh, as health equity, we, we are actually pushing. Uh, we, we, we are actually educating people and telling them that, you know what, you can actually hold your leaders accountable. You can actually mm -hmm. demand for certain things. Because these people are supposed to go to parliament and speak and make noise and say that, you know what, we need better health services, okay? And uh, uh, I am happy with the, uh, the civil society. They're doing a great job. At least now, uh, the right to health is actually being recognized. Okay. Uh, last, last year, we received a good decision from the Constitutional Court. At least now... Um, court now recognizes uh, that uh, women actually need these services. So uh, it is everyone's responsibility. In as much as we are blaming our leaders, but we need to actually also do something. Yes. 
Okay. How do we start? How do we start making our <laughs> facilities better? What are those baby steps we should start with as 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 individuals? As us. Yes. Mm, as yeah, yeah, yeah. Men yeah. and you can also elaborate more on the people themselves, uh, the, the government and the people who are responsible for these. So I think I think it's imperative for us, especially those ones who have gone to school, mm. to go back and educate our people mm. back uh, at the grassroots le uh, level yeah. and tell them in that... In our own villages? Yes, in our own villages. Families, and empower villages. them, tell them that, look here, government is not doing you a favor. It is an entitlement. I mean, it's uh, for you to go to a health facility where there are many it's doctors uh, that is equipped, where there are drugs and there are no stockouts, it is your right to actually demand because you pay taxes. The whole thing starts with paying taxes. We pay taxes on a daily and we need to actually gain from these taxes. So we need to conscientize our people. We need to tell them that, look here, it is, a, it is your duty to actually demand. It is your duty to actually speak to your leader. It is your duty to move around your community and, and say that, you know what, this health center for does not have drugs. There are stockouts. You know, we need to start small and then go up. I mean, with time, people will actually appreciate that there are certain things that we are entitled to. Right. Malaria still stands as uh, the biggest killer of Ugandans up to now. Yeah. Uh, even when we had COVID-19, yeah. malaria is yeah. still ravaging That's in right. Ugandans. Um, does your initiative really talk, look up malaria as a disease? or okay, so what, How can we prevent these numbers from going up to the malaria deaths? We've, we've not really focused on malaria. Okay. We've basically looked at uh, the health sector okay. as, uh, as, as, as a whole. whole. And uh, by the way, in 2017, we, we, we did a case okay. on uh, patients' rights. Uh, we are still waiting for the ruling. We actually <laughs> filed, is. yes, we, we are still waiting for the ruling. But we are basically looking at um, some of these public uh, health facilities, how they are understocked mm -hmm. and how uh, they do not have uh, the requisite human resource form of doctors, nurses. And uh, we are still waiting for the ruling. That is the far that we have gone. But uh, malaria per se, we've, we've not uh, 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 gone into depth to actually handle malaria. Okay. Yes, yeah. The program is still the mighty drive, as I told you, we are having Mr. Anthony Odor. Yeah. Did I pronounce it right? Yes, yes. Uh, okay. yeah, yeah. I don't like to mispronounce yeah, yeah. people's names. Yeah. Anthony Odor, he is um, the executive director of the Health Equity and Policy Initiative. By the way, in the Health Equity and Policy Initiative, you've talked about um, this, but I want you to elaborate equity to our people who are watching us. What do you mean by the term equity? Equity? Yeah. We are basically looking at um, the indigent. Uh -huh. no, no, oh, sorry. I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm uh, sorry. We, 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 we are basically looking at the vulnerable, or we are looking at those who cannot afford. Eh? Those who can who cannot afford some of these services. We are saying that they should also be considered. Okay, mm. in um, the policy making processes, mm. they should be considered um, in the different uh, considerations. Mm. So, so equity is about helping those those who are really down there, who who who, who cannot. You, you see, you see, I health equity and policy <coughs> initiative yeah. was created or was formed on the basis of Ubuntu. Yeah, basically, we are basically looking at dignity. Humanity. Yes, humanity. Mm. That, okay, uh, in as much as some people are privileged, there are yeah. others who are not. Yeah. And so, when it comes to the aspect of health, mm. we need to consider these people who are really disadvantaged. Mm. So, that, that, that's... That's why you yeah, didn't yeah. use the word equality, you used equity. Equity, yes, yeah, yes, yes. That yes. is what I wanted us yeah, to yeah. give mm. more, more mm. light about yeah, the, yeah. the equity and equality. Uh, before we should go for a short commercial break, yeah, yeah. uh, Farida, do you have a question to pose to him before we cross over? Yeah. Oh, no. no. I think we will come back with our uh, bottle. It is a Mirinda. Uh, but what Mirinda, is that? I'm saying Mirinda that. Pinapo, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some yeah. goes in and the, and the bottle, by the way, is sealed. Mm. It's very open. Mm. 
So, the, 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 so there are some particles in here. Yeah, yeah. So is this, which which company is this? Is it Crown Beverages? Yes, yes. Oh. Um, Crown Beverages. So <laughs> we shall start our okay. from, start from, from here. here and mm. uh, we elaborate mm. more. Oh, oh, we are still having Mr. Anthony Odura as I told And then you. we will mm. imagine if I went and bought this yeah, soda yeah. and it is night, I did, I did not see anything and I took it, which effects will I have? Okay. All right. All right. Uh, from the entire Mighty Drive uh, team, let's go for a short commercial break. When we come back, uh, we dissect more with Mr. Anthony Odor. Good morning. Alternative Dig Talk. Real issues. Real talk. Have you read a book that makes you want to shout the title from a rooftop? If you haven't, then here is that book. The Evolution of Constitutional Law, Public Law and Government by Retired Justice Professor George Wilson Kanye Hamba. Renowned Kenyan jurist and panelist Professor P.L. Olumumba and many other amazing speakers will grace the event. Do not miss the book launch on March 26, 2021, 2 p.m. at Imperial Real Hotel. The ticket comes with a book. All this at just 200,000 shillings. Call 0702-9076 or 0783-047785 to get the book or follow up on the launch. This event is organized by Alternative Digitalk in partnership with retired justice Professor George Wilson Kanye Hamba. Hey Ugandans, I'm Lieutenant Colonel Dewa Kiki, the Deputy Defense Spokesperson and actually the Deputy Spokesperson for the Uganda People's Defense Forces. I was hosted on Alternative Digitalk. I encourage all Ugandans that this is the way to go. Always watch, participate, give your views, and ask questions on alternative Digitalk. Digitalk, the way to go. You have got to get up pretty early to go do something. We are the Alternative Dig Talk. With our mobile studios, we are redefining TV presentation just as technology is setting the pace. We are blending our approach with fresh, perspectively designed breakfast show the mighty drive informative and entertainment show exclusive and live interviews we president so we were the juice in amlaba a pimaka unga kilo bili that's what a kalia nini bwa bali a kilo tan we are nemo kulisa igwanga ne bali munde kera jagala ko eva za the alternative digi talk it wade kanoka mighty drive era na abatu uliriza bonna abali ku mikutu jagala basa ba mugendo maso no ku uliriza all given to you just a click away on your phone, tablet, laptop, and smart TVs. As we are streaming live on our social media platforms, on the road and on the go. We are the Alternative Dig Talk. Have you read a book that makes you want to shout the title from a rooftop? If you haven't, then here is that book. The Evolution of Constitutional Law, Public Law and Government by Retired Justice Professor George Wilson Kanye Hamba. Renowned Kenyan jurist and panelist Professor P.L. Olumumba and many other amazing speakers will grace the event. Do not miss the book launch on March 26, 2021, 2 p.m. at Imperial Real Hotel. The ticket comes with a book, all this at just 200,000 shillings. 
call 702 9076 or 0783-047785 to get the book or follow up on the launch. This event is organized by Alternative Digitalk in partnership with retired justice Professor George Wilson Kanye Hamba. Hey Ugandans, I'm Lieutenant Colonel Dewa Kiki, the Deputy Defense Spokesperson, and actually the Deputy Spokesperson for the Uganda People's Defense Forces. I was hosted on Alternative Digital. I encourage all Ugandans that this is the way to go. Always watch, participate, give your views, and ask questions on Alternative Digital. Digital, the way to go. Alternative Dig Talk. Real issues. Real talk. And the date is the 26th. It will be a Friday. It is the next Friday. Time is 2 p.m. at Imperial Royal Hotel. Uh, retired Justice Professor George Wilson Kanyahamba is launching his 31st book titled The Evolution of Constitutional Law, Public Law and the Government. So to Bakoviriza tickets are going for 200,000 inclusive of the book. Munamateka. Gomana aliko university akola mateka. Now we concern the Uganda no yagalo kumanya kumateka. This book is worth investing in a 200k. You can, and, and by the way, 200k is not much money. Mugenda mbala ni mkanyu amu chupazo mwengeni kagwa hawa in just a minute. But it is worth investing. Kwa hivyo mbala 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 so to Bagamba tickets are running out, please reach out to zero seven zero two nine thousand seven six zero seven zero two nine thousand seven six or zero seven eight three zero four seven seven eight five for more information about the launch. You want a book, you want a ticket, you want to know where exactly, you want to know which speakers. Our guest speaker is Pierre Olmomba from Kenya and our uh, guest of honor is Right Honorable Jack of Olanya. We have a panel of five people, uh, inclusive of Right Honorable Amama Mbabas, Dr. Miriam Matembe, Dr. Lina Zedriga, the Deputy Principal of NOPE. We have Bernard Mona from Ghana. He's getting in here on the 24th. And we have President Mao of the P. Mm. We have a lot of digging tourists that are going to grace the event. So, Munangatana Gula ticket, all the way young Wako, they are going for 200,000. So, we'll talk over and again in the inbox here, the alternative on Facebook. Vajakuangate, Vakudam Gomlan is with them, Betu Kubiza, our National Coalition for Human Rights Defenders, Vagamba. Tewe to Lakova for Novus Wubonango, one needed them, Bediavanto. Oh, no one Mulan is with them, baby. Because Avaya Yogera Kuviogulamo, he is a human rights defender. Bobango Linga or Doroba, any other person in Golani, the Dembe of Onto, Nofna was Bubuanakotisiwa, Tisiwa, Oba, while you call Omnimogon of Novone, Toyna Centers and Medication, or Yagala Legal Assistance, or Yagala Kubuli Rakuna, Psychological Help of Nanga Gamba, and Tigenda Yoko offices is away while he and Tinda Sama Water Road, the Akapando Giaku Kalabulonjino, offices Ziriku Kubuva Jakubangate, Basobola Okuyamba, or Boba Kubiko Kunamba Yawetali after Suli. By zero eight zero zero one hundred two five zero zero eight zero zero one hundred two five zero Aba National Coalition for Human Rights Defenders Monangebe Unide Basobolinga te ba okubanti baku yambo meku guamu mani ngokola emili mojino e diobonto we have the E D for Hippie Health Equity and Policy Initiative. Hippie. Kangunyo kwita hippie dano kuchogere chwangu nyu. Togeda bitu biabula mm and 
bintu bya bulamu obadde omanye nti KFC ye nyuma nyo kulya ebinobu labe ku bulamu bwo obadde omanye nti red meat is also poisonous ebyo byona bina bikatubye tugendo okunyikiza musawa ya fesemba ye na bantu bamanye okay pichi wo manyo na yiti nobu labe ku bulamu bwo so banange tubakubiriza kuogera bintu bya bulamu toyine chupa ya fea so da wano it is a million of pineapple Nza singo ko mira mira paina po by the way. <laughs> this is a pepis product right? Yes. Na ye eri mo particles munda chitegeza it is not um si no si te yandi bade nunji kunywa. If someone consumes it it must have it must have um some impact on someone's health. I want uh council order to tell me if at all I had bought this soda at night and i took it which impacts will it have on me because by the look of things it is already um contaminated, contaminated. i think your, 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 i think your response is as good as mine for you mm -hmm. what are you thinking i am um, just thinking maybe it was the last one to be uh, packed maybe uh, I, don't know. I think it is just okay <laughs> I think you're, you're being dishonest. Um, Farida, uh, um, I'm, just, uh, I'm just assuming mm. that uh, this bottle was actually released like this. Okay. Mm. Yes. Intact. Mm. And uh, it wasn't tampered with. Okay. Yes. So it, it takes us back to the issue of standards. Okay. UNBS. Yes. It takes us back to the issue of standards. How is UNBS uh, doing its work? Because uh, they're the ones who are supposed to actually ensure that uh, people follow the standards, factories follow the standards. Mm. So the whole question now goes back to uh, how, how are they enforcing the law? Because I, I imagine they, 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 there is a policy mm. on quality assurance. Even mm. within within the factories, the different yeah, factories. Yes. Yes. Let's start with mm. the factories themselves, yes, yes. because they're the ones to ensure that predominantly. Eh, nali inkola ko mover onga tu walu officing aji te wa quality. Oh, yo yo onga ta province amazi te ga fulu ma yes. So how often? Mm. How often do they inspect, inspect inspectors' factories? Because that is part of their mandate. Yes. Because they, they are supposed to actually inspect these factories and ensure that the products that are outed are products that are of quality yes okay mm. but it, it takes us back to the other point that i was telling you that do these institutions have capacity because it's about having mm. it's about having uh, enough money mm. to actually do the inspection mm. it's about having enough money to have the human resource to yes. ensure that there is quality assurance mm. okay mm. and then again are they giving us these reports because because at least if they are working effectively mm. as the public we are entitled to some of these inspection reports okay mm. and uh, I have not seen uh, that so much of course I've seen some reports but I've not seen explicit reports on on quality assurance mm. uh, apart from I think it was 2018 that uh, a company that w a, co a company was actually closed by UNBS when they discovered that in mm. their soda there was a lot of chlorine because oh. carbonated drinks are not supposed to actually have chlorine they must be free from chlorine mm. I think uh, that was the last time I saw UNBS mm. active on, on, on a company but that was a small company. Mm. How about these multinationals? Are they are they really doing their work to ensure uh, that the standards are actually upheld? Mm. That is a question that we need to interrogate. But then, Anthony, uh, are these things actually sold as toxic, as uh, people have said? They mm. are. They are. If uh, they, they, they are they are they are actually reports. Uh, by by the WHO mm. that actually restrict, rather call for regulation mm. on marketing of carbonated drinks. Mm. Okay, mm. especially for children. 
Okay. Yes. Uh, ones who yeah. take yes. This yes. Story. Yes. In fact, there is a there the, 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 there is a whole there, there, there are actually guidelines on how member states because Uganda is a member state of WHO. Yes. So U Uganda is actually enjoyed enjoined by uh, uh, the WHO to ensure that marketing of these carbonated drinks uh, is actually regulated. But what we see is these, these adverts saturated, uh, you know, all over. Even, even the adverts are actually in public schools. Yeah. I don't know whether you've seen yes. those, those posters with uh, advertising sodas. Yes, yeah. yes. yes. That, that, that is not proper because now... Some are even using young kids to advertise. To advertise. Like Kanani soda is, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Fresh cakes, and, uh, and that's not proper. That is not proper because now, remember, this is a young child. This, this child cannot actually take a decision, an informed decision. Yeah. This child can only be guided by uh, somebody who is old. So it is, it is, it is not good uh, right now as I speak when we see uh, beverage companies doing what we call aggressive marketing. Okay? Mm. And uh, we must understand that soda, a lot of sugar, when you take a lot of sugar, sugar in your, in your in your body you're going to basically have um, um, adverse uh, you know problems yeah. you know health problems so I, I don't want to sound like a doctor but I must say that there are standards uh, even within the region within e ESC when you look at the East Africa the East African community uh, protocols we have a protocol on quality assurance and standards we even have uh, a, a law. If you look at the East Africa Community uh, Customs uh, Act, it actually talks about quality. We have the treaty itself also talks about quality, which is why last time I was actually disappointed when I saw members of parliament looking at the ban from one angle. Mm. I think that was really improper. Give us the other angle. Because, because the other angle is in 2020, there was a report that was actually released by the WHO. Uh, it was uh, the NCD uh, Progress Monitor. The NCD Progress Monitor of actually 2020. It actually indicated that about, we are about 40, 41 million people in Uganda. But 33% of our people actually have actually died of uh, NCDs. 30, I mean, 33% 33, 33 yeah, of the a, deaths. It's a very big number. Yes, it's a very big number. Very big number. And then in Kenya, Kenya has about uh, 48, 48 million people. Yes, yes. And uh, they've so far, I mean, the, as per the monetary, uh, progress monitor report, 33% had actually passed on. Okay? Yeah, 48. Uh, uh, just uh, another fact I would give for yes. you is um, that many people have died of obesity rather than malnutrition. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, and then we have Tanzania. Mm. Okay? Yes. No, in fact, it is Tanzania that is 33%. Mm. It is Kenya that is actually at 27. Mm. Because Kenya, uh, Tanzania has about 50, 55 million people. Mm. So, out of the 55, 33% died, uh, they actually died of uh, those NCDs. And Uganda, we're at 33, okay? But look at, look at our population, 41. Tanzania, uh, uh, 55. Kenya, they are 48. But theirs was at actually 27%. So meaning, within the region, save for Rwanda, because Rwanda is even worse, because theirs is at 44%. But within, if you look at the three countries, we are having a problem. So that is why when I saw the discussion in Parliament, I said, wait a minute. I think these are double standards. I mean, because these parliamentarians, they actually understand the East Africa community law. Okay? There is even a... a, a uh, the, 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 the East African community has actually even passed briefs on... Aflatoxins. You remember I told you aflatoxins are actually poisonous uh, elements. 
within 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 the different foods like maize, rice, ginats. You know, these are things that we eat on a daily, okay? But for for for, for Uganda to actually say that okay, we are actually going to retaliate. In my view, I actually felt that the 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 the, 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 the they were getting it wrong. they were getting it wrong because we are losing people. I think they ought to have had an informed uh, uh, a discussion on, on the whole ban. Because now, for me, the way I was actually looking at the ban, I, I was looking at it at a positive uh, uh, way. That, okay, it actually mirrors our situation. Yes. So we need so to come back home. What you're giving us is not of yes. excellent quality. Yeah, it's not of excellent Go quality. And, and you shove and come back exactly. And because... because do you know that the Human Rights uh, Commission reports, the annual uh, Human Rights Commission reports, are actually given to these people in Parliament to yeah. read? If you look at the 21st annual report, the one of 2018, it talks about these things we are talking about, the processed foods and how these foods are actually affecting our health mm -hmm. and how the right to health is actually being violated, the right to health you get. And these are reports that these people have read. So uh, for me, I actually felt that the discussion would, uh, yes, in as much as we need the trade, but the discussion would have been on how we can actually, yes, yes, so that, I mean, so that we can hold business like owners accountable. That's what Kenya was asserting that, you know what, exactly. you're not giving us the quality exactly. this is going to harm our people. Now, let me tell you, let me tell you one thing. Even within Kenya, was it in 2019, November, Five companies were banned because they had, uh, they were actually producing uh, maize brands that were contaminated with uh, aflatoxins. Okay, so uh, Kenya was was actually not doing it on Uganda alone, but basically even internally they were doing it to themselves. Five companies were actually banned. That is in November, 2019. So I felt that the discussion in Parliament was actually simplistic. I, they ought to have looked at uh, the, 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 the broader picture and said that, okay, uh, I think we now need to... Because the Ministry of Agriculture has done a good job. They've actually produced uh, posters, brochures on aflatoxins. If you actually uh, visit their website, some of those posters are there on aflatoxins. Uh, if you visit the UNBS uh, uh, website, they are also there. So the problem is about how can we now translate this information, you know, to, to our people on ground because they need to understand uh, this information because they are the ones who are in the gardens, so they must be taught how to handle products. Mm -hmm. Yeah, otherwise we are going because to lose people. They are the primary source we get these products from. If we treat exactly. them, uh, yes. that means we are treating the whole thing. Exactly. Yeah. So, so, so now we need to actually uh, translate uh, these brochures, these posters, in a language that we understand. By Nubite Kamu Uganda, they need to actually put these posters in Uganda. In, yes. They need yes, they need to educate them. So that people should not leave their, their maze in the gardens because when you leave your maize in the garden for long I mean the, the maize will actually get affect, uh, affected it will actually be contaminated and if you put it on the ground if you put the maize on the ground it will actually be contaminated and once it is even worse yes ngate wali watching to cement ah kawo etundubale oba some kind of canvas to ensure that a mereno it is safe kati bojikaza bulunji katate obo inokolachi okujiteka mu store nga nayo nnunji eri eri bulunji bataddewo embawo properly aerated wegamba you so that you don't allow the rodents yeah they, yeah there are those granaries so so they are in the so so the point I am trying to make here is Omani we have uh, four generations of uh, human rights. Okay? We have the first generation, those are civil and political rights, and then we have the second generation 
that covers uh, economic, social, and cultural rights. And then we have uh, the third one that covers uh, the right to a clean, a, a healthy environment, uh, you know, collective rights. That, that, that is uh, actually the, the third generation. And then now we have the fourth generation, which is actually uh, talking about the right to, uh, you know, now because of the emerging technologies now, there is the right to digital, uh, uh, I mean, the, 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 the right to internet, those things. Yeah, so as hippie, for us, we are basically focusing on the second, the second and third, uh, yeah, second and third generation because they are, they are, they are, they are, they are, they are, they are cross cutting. Now, we need to understand that there is need for government in a, uh, to actually regulate businesses. So that's why we have the, the component of business and human rights. Just look at the factories uh, that we have around. Where are they located? Some are actually located in swampy areas. Mm. And yet we are supposed to actually protect these places. But what we see, there is waste that is actually discharged in these swampy areas. Yes. And that becomes toxic. You get me? It mm. becomes toxic. Okay? Mm. And remember, there are people who are actually using some of these swamps maybe to grow. To uh, yes, yes, yes. Now, this discharge will actually uh, enter the, 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 the crop and then you will eat it and it will basically have an effect. We have, uh, like for example, Lake Victoria. There are those factories that are around Lake Victoria. Many of them down yes, there west in the lake exactly. Area. Many of them. But do you know what they are Super doing? What, what they are doing to the lake? And you and I are taking water every day. Mm. What, what, what kind of water are we talking about? We are eating fish, you get. So the issue of toxics and human rights is a serious thing. We actually have a, a silent pandemic. You people are talking about COVID, you know, yes, COVID is serious, but there is a silent pandemic that you and I, like you, you, you people who are in the media, should actually communicate to the people that in as much as, yes, other rights are being violated, but there are also other important rights that are also being violated. Yes. But there are these, uh, let's talk about the water before we go. Yeah, yeah. That. Uh, the water is treated with these chemicals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually don't. And then aren't these chemicals also toxic to some extent? Um, well, I, 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 I don't want to speak like a scientist. I'm just a lawyer. <laughs> but for us to really understand that these, our water sources are actually safe, or the water we take is actually safe, then we must actually empower the agencies that are in charge. For example, uh, we must have uh, bodies that can really test and report back to us and tell us, okay, this water is safe or what. Or we must even have st strong civil society organizations that can actually go and do these tests, go out, you know, and come, as a, come back and give us a report. Because we are living at the masses of God. We don't know the water we are taking, okay? We don't know. But we, we need to get public-spirited individuals to start questioning. I like the way you're questioning. I want you to join me and then we start questioning some of these things. We go in a place, get a sample, and then take it somewhere and then test the water. And then get back to the people. Maybe remind government that, look here, I think this water is not actually good for human consumption. So it is a role that uh, you and I must take. But it all starts with uh, uh, civic education. We need to actually empower our people. We need to visit the different places and tell people that, hey, you, you, you have a right to health. You have a right to water. You have a right to quality food. And uh, when you have this right, Yes, you, as a person, you, you have obligations, okay? There are certain responsibilities that you have, but even the state or the duty bearers also have, uh, they, they also have some responsibilities, okay? And how, how can you check them? Because even the Constitution allows us to, to actually hold uh, agencies, public organ, I mean public uh, bodies accountable. And so 
it is it is it is something that you and I must work on. Our studio line is 0789 yeah. 017 yeah, yeah. 145. Yeah. 0789 017 145. You can call in and ask any questions. The guest will be replying you right away. Yeah. Yeah. Facebook. Please type in your questions. I'll be reading them in the next few minutes. Yeah. Yeah. It was it was still about the yeah, 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 yeah. Cancer. cancer. I want you to talk about the, the are there other toxic foods apart from because you've delved around yeah, this, yeah. I think because it was the, the main thing that yeah, yeah. recently. But talk about these other foods also and um, the, the, how toxic are they and how do you find out about um, them? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not only maize. I think uh, the reason as to why we are focusing on maize is because of yeah. what happened. What happened? Yeah, 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 yeah. But we eat genuts on a daily. Yes. But what kind of genuts do we eat? What kind? Okay? Uh, remember uh, uh, the genuts that we have on the market. You know, because people are doing business, they'll just go and grind this thing and then put it out for us to buy and we just eat but most of uh, uh these 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 grains uh, and, and and nuts like for example genets have carcinogenic uh, uh, elements those are cancer causing elements okay? they are aflatoxins okay yes 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 they do they do because we do not have a perfect monitoring system Okay, and it all starts from the local government. Okay, but you and I know that these people have not really been empowered to actually inspect the different farmers. So I think our cry to government and to members of parliament is if they can actually increase on, uh, on, 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 on funding so that local government can actually help with the inspection. That, that 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 would actually be good for for, for for the state the local government is closer to the people yeah it is it is actually Next closer to the people yeah. now let me tell you with the maize we, at times people who look after or, or who who are into livestock they actually use maize do you know that they actually give maize to uh, to, to to cattle and uh, what happens when when these animals actually take this this maize that is contaminated it actually goes into the milk. There are studies that actually show that this actually goes into yes, the milk, and then it also affects the. It, it actually also affects the meat. Yes. Okay, so so it is not only maize, but we have meat, we have milk, we have uh, rice. Okay, we have millet, you know, and these are things that we eat on a daily. So so, which is why I am actually calling upon Ugandans to actually join us in this fight. Okay. We need because right now the topic is actually not understood. Because when somebody uh, hears the right to food, they say, "Right to food, really? You know, a right to food? Yes, you are. You have that right to quality food." Okay. So those those are some of the things that we are pushing for, and we need to understand that uh, our hospitals are actually burdened. Like if you go to the cancer institute, we have m many people who are actually sick, and we do not have the facilities. So, which is why we are pushing for the idea of prevention, okay? We are so much on the state, but we as individuals, we, what have we done? What have we done? Sometimes you look yes, at yes. and you're like, now, what, how should the yeah, government yeah. help you? Yes, yes, I mean, yes. You've not even washed your hands. Yes, Sometimes yes. we blame the government. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes we have to yeah. do a self-reflection. Yeah, yeah. Mm, you know, yeah. cancer has yeah. been on the rise uh, mm. currently. I mean, when I was young, I used to see cancer yeah. Yes, yeah, sir. And the picture I have yeah. is a cancer patient. Yeah. 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 But now in Uganda we have a lot of cancer. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's real, people. And uh, some of the causes is uh, the food we eat. Yes. I want, um, you are not a scientist. I'm say. not, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I put a disclaimer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm basically looking at policy and the law. But yeah, we but can we, talk yeah. about these things. Yeah. But we should mm, look yes. at the products that people should really avoid. Or people are eating, but they do not know they have effects on their, on their head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, even young kids now have cancer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's really, the reason as to why I'm hard on the, on the, on, on, on the government is the, the, the government has a huge burden. 
Okay. Because right now, as I talk, uh, do you know in this country now we have uh, uh, chemicals of global concern? That is, that is the word that they actually use in the UN systems, chemicals of global concern. Well, like, for example, there are pesticides that have actually been banned in, in countries, uh, in, 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 uh, in, in high-income high countries. But we are having those, those pesticides here. Yeah. Yes, and uh, we are spraying these, uh, these, these, these uh, pesticides on, uh, I mean, in our gardens. Uh, we, we, there are different chemicals that we actually use on our, in our gardens. And yet, the state has actually the capacity to actually block some of these things yeah. and say that, uh -uh, no, we are not going to allow some of these things that have actually been banned. Okay? Look at the tomatoes that we take. I, I sympathize with people who eat fresh uh, tomatoes because some of these things are sprayed with some of uh, uh, these chemicals. And, and these chemicals are actually very dangerous. So, which is why we're saying that there has to be, in as much as we want to do business, but businesses must be regulated. So okay. people should there, there must be regulated. Businesses are done by people who are alive. I don't know why, people, why we forget about the health and go to money. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because, because now if you're not healthy, you cannot, if, you, you cannot make the money. You cannot make the money. So, which is why we are, we, yes, we, I may actually sound uh, as somebody who is overly demanding, but look here, the state has a big stake in this. Yeah. And uh, people, our people must understand that if they start demanding for some of these things, hmm. then the market is actually going to be regulated. Having a free market economy is something that is dangerous, especially to our health. Because now people are just thinking about uh, the liquidity, the, the, next, the, the, the next coin, okay? But now how about uh, the consumers? So in other words, we have a problem with the consumer protection um, laws here in Uganda. In fact, um, we have uh, the Food and Nut is it Nutritional Bill 2007 that is still gathering dust. We do not have a food authority. Okay? In fact, if we had a food authority, some of these things would actually be put in check, would actually have an entity that would help us monitor the food chain, how are things gotten from the, uh, from the gardens, uh, uh, to the market and to the final person. Mm. But now we do not have a, a, a food authority and that is a major problem. So I am actually calling upon you people to actually start campaigning for a food authority. We need a food, a food authority so that some of these things can actually be uh, 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 pushed for. Yes. Um, before we go to the questions on Facebook, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I really want you to talk about the meat. And yes, yes, me. I think I think meat per se is not bad, only that it takes us back to the business aspect. You remember there was a time when uh, some people were arrested here in Kampala. Mm. Uh, uh, they had uh, injected the meat with formalin. Mm. Okay, formalin. And, 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 and you know formalin. I yes. I don't know. I Let's not argue it. But <laughs> formalin, <laughs> it's, 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 it's a chemical that is actually injected in food to ensure that uh, the, uh, especially the meat is preserved. Okay. And then uh, uh, w what is actually known uh, about formalin <laughs> yes. is they actually use it to inject dead bodies. People, yes. yes. That is what I wanted. So to now... <laughs> This is the same chemical that is actually used. Yes, yes. Yes. To, yes. yes. to preserve to preserve them. Yes. And they, 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 they put it in yes. food. So uh, which is why we, 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 we need to come out and, and push for a food authority. They will actually help us in the inspection because the, 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 the work is I think overwhelming for the local authorities and uh, because of the underfunding. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Be before yeah. we delve into the comments and the yeah, questions yeah. for you, yeah. talk about the dietary. How, how should the normal, you're not a, 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 a nutritionist. Yeah, a nutritionist. <laughs> yeah. Doctor, but 
just give us more light because you being in this health uh, equity and uh, yeah, yeah. you know, you inform. Just tell yeah. us the good diet. How would the good diet be? I, th I think we, we need to go organic. Um, we need to avoid fries. We need to avoid taking a lot of sugar. Yeah, we need to we need we, we need to avoid uh, the salts because these 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 uh, because with the studies that I've I've actually read, uh, salts, uh, sugars, fats, yes, they, they they are actually detrimental to our health, and um, we are actually doing a case. I won't uh, discuss it here, but uh, at least we we are doing a case. We filed a case on. Uh, I mean, against uh, National Children Authority, UNBS, and the Attorney General. And uh, we, we are asking uh, government to do something simple for us. That uh, caution, caution the general public. Let them take informed uh, choices. Tell them that, you know what, if it's a fast food restaurant... Cigarettes, uh, cigarettes, yeah, 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 that, 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 that's what you're pushing. Mm -hmm. As how, before, just, just lastly, yes, how true is the statement that cancer is a, is a, is a genetic disease? It's not coming from because there are people who assert that. Because my father had cancer, yeah, 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 I also yeah, have cancer. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, people, people take it as that way, yeah, yeah. but it's this it's like sickness. Yeah, yeah. You should actually sit back and, and say that, okay, I think I need to be careful and, and watch what I eat. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, lastly, yeah, is uh, the health equity hippie, uh, is it only in, uh, is it following Kampala, is it Kampala best or the whole country? At just uh, 20 minutes to 9 a.m., allow us for, in for the comments. Before I go in the comments, I really want you to know from the EP, does EP do some trainings uh, yeah. to people to know the, what they should eat, what they should eat, what they should add mm. before? And yeah, we, we don't do trainings per se, but uh, we actually sensitize communities. We reach out and uh, empower people to actually, so that they can know their rights. But when it comes to nutritional issues, we are not experts. We, we, we also read just like other people. So, but we do uh, human rights work and, and train people on the aspects of, uh, on, uh, aspects of the right to health, right to food, right to water, right to a healthy and clean environment. Those are the things that we focus on. Yeah. No, we don't. <laughs> we don't. We don't have branches. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we, we have plans. Uh, hippie, hippie is, is a big dream. We are hoping if God sees us through, uh, we'll actually make it bigger. Yeah. Thank you for watching. I will not read your comments.
they are still struggling to understand. But we, we know with time, we are optimistic that they will actually understand uh, uh, this. Hopefully, you will also help us make them understand uh, the concept of toxics and human rights. Any other challenges apart from that one? Other challenges, of course, uh, of course, the shrinking uh, civil space, you know, because now, you know, because what we are talking about is uh, at times it's hard hitting and so. Uh, and you are looked at as yeah, as yeah, 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 opposition, and yet we, we, we are basically doing human rights. We are not into politics, but basically doing human rights. You don't talk about funding. That means funding. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, in fact, we were better by Nasente to Zeta Gida Dalla. To Zeta Gida Dalla. By the way, uh, Hippie has stood because of friends. And uh, thank you very much, uh, our friends and uh, our partners. Uh, we've actually received support from many people. Uh, we've received support from uh, Council Aaron. We've uh, received support from uh, uh, lawyers working with Chizan Mugisha. We've received support from uh, Witness Radio. And um, we, we, I mean, because they believe in uh, our dream and uh, our cause, and we believe others are going to come. Let's talk about something that is really trending: the vaccination. The vaccination. Yeah, and, uh, have you ever done your, a, a bit of research about this vaccine? People are skeptical about uh, taking the shot. Have you already taken well, your shot? Well, I would have to reserve my comments because uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think you need to place a doctor on the seat to actually listen. Do you realize about the vaccine? Um, Okay, I just uh, for one minute past uh, 8 a.m. Program is still the Mighty Drive Show. I told you we're having Mr. Anthony Do. He's uh, the executive director of the Health Equity and uh, our Policy Initiative. Hippie, that's how he likes uh, uh, to call it. Uh, as well, we come to the end of the show. Can you just give, throw us throw more light about uh, how people, anyone who would want to contact you? No, he, before he deals with the health guy. When will you start as the Okay. As hippie, we, we started in 2016. Um, it has actually been uh, an organization that has squarely been funded by people, 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 people. So we've gotten support from friends, we've gotten support from uh, uh, people who believe in our cause. Um, you can't believe it. To this day, we do not have a funder. We do not have a funder, but we are strong. Five years uh, doing uh, litigating the right to right. And uh, for us, that is an achievement. You do not run an organization for five years and you've achieved. To us, it, it, it really humbles us. Without funding, without. Oh, yes. without so but many, just. Many organizations. Yeah, basically. Like yeah, basically uh, uh, receiving handouts from friends who believe in the cause. For us, that is an achievement. It's yeah. not easy to actually run an organization for, for five years. And then, of course, we've also reached out to the communities, especially in, 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 in Lango. We've uh, uh, empowered people on, 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 on the patient's uh, charter, their rights and responsibilities. And for us, that is humbling. We've actually uh, filed a case. And uh, we remember when we filed the case, government was 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 quick to negotiate with the uh, the striking doctors and uh, the doctors had to go back to the hospital for us that was actually an achievement and then um, when we started working on the campaign uh, the soda campaign mm. it really worked out uh, at least now i'm seeing uh, unbs doing some work yeah. 
Uh, I am seeing them now regulating uh, these uh, small beverage companies that are that that are marketing drinks that are that are improper that are not to the standard that, that is expected. For us, that is an achievement. So um, we've we've been doing a lot of work, and we shall continue to do our work. As, um, yeah. Can you just elaborate on uh, the vision of Hippie? What is the vision of Hippie? Yeah, the vision of Hippie is uh, seeing a society that is empowered, um, especially on their right to health. Uh, a, a society that can actually demand that duty bearers should actually fulfill their right to health, promote it and uh, fulfill it. Okay. Yes. Okay, th this is just a, a, a request from me, Edgar, as an individual. Yes, yes. I, I, I pray that you guys can inculcate uh, yeah. things like mental health, yeah. because now it's a very, very yeah, yeah, big, yeah. big challenge. There's also post-traumatic stress disorder, these yeah, things yeah. that people have gone yeah. through a lot. Yeah. Maybe in, uh, in your policies, you can, yeah. you can inculcate things like yeah. that to, to, to better the whole, and also bring other people yeah, yeah. those people who are mentally unhealthy. I, I hope the hippie, tip, the hippie team is listening. <laughs> you heard that right. It's not coming from me. Um, it's, uh, tell us about your capacity building, your yeah, team. Uh, yeah. How does your team work? How many people are you on? We, we have a lean team. Yeah. Very interesting. We have a very lean team. We are not many, but it's amazing that we've done great things. Yeah, yeah we've done great things. We 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 about five people, but uh, not paid. Uh, but they've really sacrificed. And uh, we still believe that we, we, we are actually going to push that the hippie dream. Yeah, yeah. Actually, for me, that's what uh, where is yeah. located? Uh, we are located at uh, Mengo, um, Albert Cook Road. Uh, the building is called Awab Mall. Um, you can visit, you can check us out at Suit uh, D2. That's where we are. Anytime. Your socials? Um, yes, we have hippie. Okay. Hippie, as hippie. Yes, it's 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 actually on, uh, uh, on 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 Facebook, and it's also on Twitter. Wow. Yes. That's, that's good. Yeah. All right. As we come to the end of the show, your parting shots, and uh, can you just throw more light on mm -hmm. some of your light moments? What do you like to do in uh, in your time? As, uh, as um, in my time. Uh, of course. Why is that flash? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes, I love music in my free time. I uh, I love music. I enjoy music. I, I dance a lot. So <laughs> yes, that is true. And 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 those those. Yeah. She knows. She knows that I. <laughs> yes, yes. So I dance. That, that that's that's how I cool off the stress. We work a lot uh, as lawyers. We have sleepless nights. So at times you must have moments where you have to dance it off. And yes, yes, yes. Okay, I like that. Yeah, yeah. Movie, yeah, yeah. No, it was cold. It was really cold, and I felt that really, I should I should surely come. Yes. Before we yeah. Come out mm. campus, you do not know which farm to go to. Maybe mm. you want to give us that picture. Uh, the, I, I think it's about passion. It takes you because uh, ideally, for us, we are doing this work. It's it's not for the money because if it were for the money, we would actually enter into things that are lucrative. But what we do apparently is to give back to community. And, and like I told you, mm. I lost my mother when uh, she was giving birth. Yeah. And at the time, there were no resources at, at the hospital. Yeah, yeah. And so I felt that to celebrate her, I need to actually come out and make noise around uh, issues to do with health. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Why is it that lawyers mm. do not want... Okay. We have seen many of them who yeah. are uh, practicing. And why do you think that every lawyer who graduates should go to, to, to courts of law and maybe practice their mm. profession? Why don't you think, okay, channeling your own self, maybe, okay, mm. I have my degree in law, mm. I can be uh, somewhere mm. in, in an NGO, maybe mm. for mm. some other little yeah, yeah, yeah. Old focus on having a law firm, working mm. for a law firm, maybe yeah, yeah. to, to, to courts of law. Is, 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 is it just the mindset that maybe you have to do law, you have to be the court of law? Or no, I, I mean law, law as, a, as, a, as a discipline is open 
I mean, uh, there are people who are doing uh, serious things and, and they're not going to court. Mm. There, are, there are people who are doing business and they're lawyers. There are people who are in, in, in parliament doing politics and they're lawyers, but they do not necessarily go to court. I think uh, we, it's, it goes back to your passion. How do you want to deliver? How are you going to use your law degree uh, to do whatever you're passionate about? For us, uh, we, we are passionate about health and we feel that we must use the law to actually advance, uh, advance uh, uh, the right to health and, 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 and other aspects. So with others, I think it's about passion. I, I believe it's a discipline, but you can do it to do other things. Um, you can be a lawyer and, and support musicians. You, you can be a lawyer even without going to court. Yeah. There's, a, there's an individual who has just sent me a direct message here. He's saying, yeah. uh, Council, tell us your comments from the recent arrest with Council Nicholas Opio and Esum Esomu. Oh my God, that is something that I was running away from, but it has come eventually. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, on the 22nd, we were arrested because of the work that we were doing. Uh, we were doing work of course, human rights work, and the state wasn't comfortable with the work that we were doing, and 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 so we were kidnapped. So the you whole were yes, Nicholas yes, Nicholas yes, Nicholas we were kidnapped. Right. So the whole idea about drones, I think, started with us. They started with us. They came and picked us uh, at, at uh, I mean, from Kamocha, and um, uh, uh, two colleagues, two colleagues and I were actually beaten while on transit. It was really unfortunate, uh, but we've moved on. I mean, we, that won't stop us from doing our work. Aren't you, I mean, aren't you, aren't you scared, uh, uh, No, I'm not scared. I'm not scared because uh, I'm passionate about this work. I love human rights and I am willing to actually serve those who are vulnerable, those who are disadvantaged. Um, it's, 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 no, it's, it's something that is ingrained in me. It's something that I love. And uh, if, if it's the price that I'm going to pay, so be it. But I'm not running away from this because some soldier beat me up. No, it is something that I love. Yeah. Oh. Yes. I've, I've, I've not met people with yeah. that resilience. Yeah. So I'm not giving up or doing human rights. Uh, I'll continue to do the work. And uh, if it means being beaten, how many times? I don't know. But it is, it. yes, yes. Yeah. 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 You're patting <laughs> shots. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, um, human rights is not politics. Um, there are many who actually think when we go on social media and advocating for certain things, they actually associate us to politics, politics and certain political parties. No. Um, personally, I'm apolitical. I don't do politics. I'm basically doing human rights. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I'm not going to give up on human rights in spite of uh, the challenges that we get uh, every day. We, we are going to continue with the work uh, till we see a society that is better for us all, for our children and the generations to come. Thank yeah. you so much, uh, Mr. Yeah. Anthony. For yes, I'm us. humbled. You, you, you're welcome anytime. I'm really humbled. Uh, you people, thanks for hosting me. Yeah, it's yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, people should uh, really understand yeah, toxics and human rights. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have almost. You know him? <laughs> <laughs> My brother is also Amos. <laughs> well, uh, to, to, he's called to Yanje. Uh, uh, he's from the Fun Factory. We're going to have him. Oh, oh. I know him. Oh, him. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> that's that's interesting. That's interesting. Yeah, we're going to have him. Mm. Oh, in the studio. So to mm. with we are losing up. Mm. Okay. We are losing up. It is a Friday. So okay. to come here, we're going to have him. So to come here, we're going to have him. Okay. Mm. 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 Mm.
Sibaba kusige na kubari sa wongo zeno muami kuhanga edi gama fio ati mu control mbade mu ne mu kosa i ano Anthony mu mbejalo e dedi diani atu deko kamera yona kuwalero ati na jima ya machebi ya tovuze mwana weba le kubera mu gende zaku kubo ni tafuna kabenje kubera zani yeah thank you thank you for working thank you see you tomorrow have a good day. Alternative Dig Talk. Real issues. Real talk. Hey Ugandans, I'm Lieutenant Colonel Dewa Kiki, the Deputy Defense Spokesperson, and actually the Deputy Spokesperson for the Uganda People's Defense Forces. I was hosted on Alternative Dig Talk. I encourage all Ugandans that this is the way to go. Always watch participate, give your views, and ask questions on alternative DigiTalk. DigiTalk, the way to go. Have you read a book that makes you want to shout the title from a rooftop? If you haven't, then here is that book. The Evolution of Constitutional Law, Public Law, and Government by Retired Justice Professor George Wilson Kanye Hamba. Renowned Kenyan jurist and panelist Professor P.L. Olimomba and many other amazing speakers will grace the event. Do not miss the book launch on March 26, 2021, 2 p.m. at Imperial Real Hotel. The ticket comes with a book. All this at just 200,000 shillings. Call 0702-9076 or 0783-04-77. 85 to get the book or follow up on the launch. This event is organized by Alternative Digitalk in partnership with retired justice Professor George Wilson Kanye Hamba. Hey Ugandans, I'm Lieutenant Colonel Dewa Kiki, the Deputy Defense Spokesperson, and actually the Deputy Spokesperson for the Uganda People's Defense Forces. I was hosted on Alternative Digitalk. I encourage all Ugandans that this is the way to go. Always watch, participate, give your views, and ask questions on alternative DigiTalk. DigiTalk, the way to go. The Alternative DigiTalk. Real issues. Real talk.